Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Sam's Report. What episode is this? I think this is episode uh, 57. 57, that's a lot of episodes. But we're coming to you live every Friday morning, at least live on the East Coast of the United States. And today is September 23rd, 2016, and the next two weeks are going to be crazy busy, at least on my side. A uh, couple of things here. Obviously, Ignite, been talking about that for a while. Uh, quite a few people have reached out and said, hey, you know, we'll meet up. Loving it. Definitely going to do that. Uh, those things are going on. Also things that are going on throughout premium. Uh, Paul is going to have a post later today and yeah, so things are, things are about to get real here really, really quick. So a couple show notes or things or whatever. So the podcast that Paul and I are going to do, we are actually going to start next week. We're going to do two episodes next week. We'll live at Ignite. So, uh, still working on the logistics of that, but we're working with Microsoft. So Paul and I doing our show. Uh, it's going to be Monday and Tuesday and it should be open to everybody. This is just going to be kind of a, a, a primer for when we kick off the full thing, um, which I'll explain here in a minute, but podcast starting on Monday and Tuesday at Ignite from Ignite brought to you by Microsoft. Well, they're not like sponsoring it, I guess, but they are hooking us up with all the equipment that we shall need to, to rock and roll this. Uh, also on Monday, we are going to go live with the forums. On Throt, this is, you know, we're in the final hours here of putting on polishing touches, trying to smash a lot of bugs, but the forums are going to go live and also new comments on the site are expected to go live. Obviously everything's subject to change, uh, blah, 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 all that good stuff. But we're looking at, it's looking like Monday is going to be a, a pretty good day. So a couple, couple notes. So the forums are going to go live and they're a little bit, they're not IPB, they're not vBulletin. It's something we built. Um, and it's not like some crazy experience, but it is definitely different. And it's something we feel is much more modern, uh, much less heavy than a traditional forum. And so just something to keep an eye out for is we will eventually, and I, I can't make any promises yet. We'll eventually be looking for moderators too. Um, we expect these forums to do quite well. And we're also, we also know we get a lot of comments, um, a post I did last week on Throt had 250-ish comments. So at some point, we will be looking for moderators. Uh, I don't quite know. The, the tools honestly don't exist. Well, they exist, but they don't they don't function very well. So we're not ready to bring them on board yet. But eventually, we will be looking to kind of staff up from that perspective. And so that is Monday. Uh, like, you know, like, what, four days from now. Ooh. <laughs> A lot of work to be done in the next four days. And then the following Monday, October 3rd, is when the full premium... Uh, site redesign in theory is should go live. I'm, I'm pretty confident. We're pretty far along. It's looking great and That should be that so also on that third would mean that that is when pa pod pod I should just start calling him pod. I bet that would annoy him and that would make me happy <laughs> That is when Paul and I will start doing our daily podcast every single day. We'll start on uh, October 3rd is what we're looking at. So again um Things might change and shift, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about these dates. And if we miss the dates by anything, uh, it won't be my much. So we're, we're really far along in the process. We said in the fall, and the fall technically started yesterday. So yeah, really, really good stuff going on there. And just something to be paying attention to. Also, that will mean that if you're not a Threat Premium member already... Uh, the price goes up on October 3rd. So just kind of keep that in mind. And if you already are a member, one, thank you. And two, that means that's when the actual timer starts for all the premium content. So you get a year from October 3rd. So some people signed up in June, so they've really gotten about 18 months out of it, which pretty good, pretty good stuff. So that is happening. New design, October 3rd, forum and comments uh, on Monday. First kind of previews of the podcast on Monday of next week from Ignite. Yeah. A lot of big stuff. I keep freaking out because October 3rd is also my wedding anniversary. <laughs> so I can't can't forget that. Uh, the wife would not be too happy with me if I did forget that. So that that is what's going on in the world of Throt Premium. Um, and to answer one question, so uh, a commenter wrote, says, Brad, I want to join Premium, but I want to pay monthly. So that will be an option. It will not. I don't know if we'll have it day one. Um, I can promise you that that will be an option. We've heard that from quite a few people who want to pay monthly and we will be making that possible. So that will happen. Uh, I do believe you get a discount if you pay for the year in full, but I totally understand why people would not want to do that. I, I, I get that. And so we will have a monthly option 
Uh, I don't know if it'll be on day one, but it will be not long after because we did promise people that. So anyways, let's dive in to the news of the week. There's been a lot. Microsoft continues to pump it out, um, sometimes officially, sometimes unofficially. And the thing kicking us off this week is the Microsoft Authenticator for iPhone uh, finally adds push notifications. So if you have one of these guys, well, this is an iPhone 7. If you have one of these guys or any iPhone or any iOS device that's running, I think um, 10, I'm sure it probably works on 9. I don't know about 8. Uh, this is great. What this Authenticator app does, and it, I don't know why it took so long, is let's say you're trying to log into your Outlook.com account and it says, oh, you haven't been on this PC before and you need to enter in that one-time app code. So what they would do is, at least the way I have mine set up, is that I would get text messaged a code and it would say, punch in this six-digit number. You punch in that six-digit number and you hit enter and you're in. So what it's going to do now is the only thing faster than SMS are push notifications. So when you log in, it's going to push a thing to your phone and say, hey, are you trying to log in? You hit yes on your phone and you're authenticated. It's just an easier way to use two-factor authentication, which you should be using. If you're not using two-factor authentication because you think it's a pain in the butt, annoying, whatever, um, here's why. Yahoo announced this week that 500 million, 500 million accounts were compromised uh, two years ago. Thanks for you know the timely notice there, Yahoo. Uh, 500 million accounts. I'm sure Verizon is extremely happy about their purchase because technically Yahoo knew about this uh, before the acquisition and now Verizon paid, what, $4.8 billion for Yahoo. I don't think that deal has closed, so maybe there's going to be some wiggle room or something coming out. I don't know. I don't. That's not really any of my business or how we'd ever figure that out. I guess it would come out publicly. But yeah, Yahoo, 500 million accounts. Turn on two-factor. It, it's worth it. Microsoft just made it a little bit easier to use. So yes. Anyways, Microsoft Authenticator out for the for iOS. And there you go. Uh, other things happening this week. Minecraft Education for Education. Minecraft Education Edition, if I could uh, enunciate correctly, will ship November 1st. Uh, this has been pretty popular in schools and it's going to be five bucks a user. We'll see if that five bucks a user stands and how many people that actually attracts. But Microsoft is now saying, hey, this is when things go live. So other things that are happening this week, a duplex, the good guys at a duplex uh, issued some more statistics this week about Windows 10. So we got Windows 10. Obviously, there's a couple different versions. Uh, we've got a couple different versions here. We, we've got the July release, which was Windows 10 launch. Uh, which was 1507. We had the November release, which was version 1511. And then we have the latest August release, uh, the August and uh, August 2nd anniversary update as 1607. So according to these guys, let me expand here this little chart that they had. Uh, according to their data, which comes from ad impressions from applications. So it's not perfect, but it's, it's honestly probably the best look we're going to get. Uh, at least, you know, at least it's a metric. So what we've got is that people on 1511, this is of the Windows 10 users, Microsoft last issued 350 million. I know, we all know it's north of that, but we'll just do 350 million. So of those 350 million, 60% are still running the November release. 34.5% uh, are running the anniversary update. So that's uh, about a third of the install base, a little over a third, That's that's not bad. Uh, 5.1% are still on the vanilla Windows 10 and a half percent are on uh, the insider builds, the RS2 builds. So half percent of 350 million ones. So that's 35 would be 10%. 3.5 uh, would be 1%. What's half of 3.15? Was that 1.75? About 1.75 million? That seems a little low, to be honest. Uh, so that does seem a little bit low, but... Yeah, I don't know. They say that there's 7 million. Now, we, obviously, they're not all active. And uh, granted, I probably account for like five of those people because um, of all the different machines, at least based on the numbers that they've given us. So, yeah, uh, a little over a third are now on the anniversary update. That's not too bad. I mean, that's that's a pretty good update take. So, anyways, that's Windows 10 adoption rate uh, within the Windows 10 ecosystem ex as it exists today. So we'll be curious. I'm hoping that next week at Ignite, by the way, that they give us a new figure. The 350 million is from end of June. And so it's been a couple months. I think, uh, you know, I think they're going to want to... When I was trying to think about what are they going to push at Ignite? So there's going to be a couple things and not to deviate too much here. So they're going to have Windows Server 2016. I actually think that's the official launch. They're going to announce that, hey, we're launching it. Then there's a couple 
a week goes by or whatever, and then it's available. Uh, I think they're going to push Windows 10. They just announced their Windows 10 as a service. Remember earlier this uh, month, actually, we now learned the E5 pricing, which is $14 a month, and that comes with the advanced threat protection. And then there's, uh, what is it, $7 a month for the E3 SKU, which is just v Windows 10 Enterprise. So I think we're going to see a lot of pushing on that, uh, what's new in Server 16. And then, of course, all the SharePoint stuff and everything else that has come out. I'm actually hoping we're going to hear about Skype for Teams. We'll talk about that later. But that's Ignite. Uh, that's that's what I'm kind of hoping we're going to hear at Ignite, along with a new figure of install base. We haven't heard we haven't heard in a while, which is pretty, I don't know, I, I wouldn't say it's unlike Microsoft. We're now well over a year beyond its its launch date. So, I don't know, is it time? I hope so. I, and what would be a good number? I guess that's a better question, is what would be a good number? Like, if they come out and say, hey, we only have 375 million on Windows 10 now, that wouldn't be so good. Uh, it has to be well north of 40, 400. I would think, like, 450 would feel like a really good number, but I think that might be a little ambitious. I don't know. Um, we shall see what they actually do. They may not, they don't have to give us a number. They're not under any obligation, but, uh, we will see, we will see what they do. Speaking of Windows 10, a new build of Windows 10 has come out, 14931. So there's, there's a lot of new app updates in this release. And if you're running it, go download it and you can go play with all the new stuff. There's nothing like, there's no edge snooze feature or anything like that in this release. Uh, but there are a lot of new app updates, which really just kind of got me on a tangent that whatever happened to the mail app? So I use the mail app every single day. It is the app that I use to do email. And granted, it's not bad. Like people freak out like, wow, this is terrible. Honestly, as a as a lightweight mail client, it's fine. It, it serves my needs well. But one thing that popped up in an insider build, and the calendar app has this today, it showed up in a couple insider builds where if you're reading an email, and it's, it's just a one pane um, universal app right now. You could click this little button that says pop out and it would break the message out into its own window. And it existed for like three or four insider builds. And then it was gone. Microsoft said there was some stability issues and blah, 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 blah. Uh, whatever, they, they pulled the feature. And so this was, they announced that they're pulling a feature that I think that was back in June uh, when I looked it up. And so now obviously we're, coming up on the end of September and in the message they said it'll be back soon well it's still not back and it makes you kind of wonder it's like what the hell are they doing like the Outlook uh, or sorry the Windows 10 calendar app has this feature so we know it exists um, this is kind of this is like what frustrates me about Microsoft they have 100,000 employees but when they talk about this stuff they act like four people work on this app uh, what are they doing like you partially ship this feature. Okay, so then it works. You bring it back in, you fix it, and you ship it. Like, you get the feeling that the guy that works on, the guy or gal, who works on Windows 10 Mail app, that's like their side project that they work on every third Wednesday of the month. And you kind of get this feeling across many different teams. And so, I don't know, like Microsoft, what's going on? Come on, ship this. It's a button. You, you teased us with it. I, I need it. It's not, this is not um, crazy. This is not crazy, but anyway, so there's a bunch of that stuff. I don't really know what's going on in the mail app. The only plausible theory that I can think of is that they're actually going to port Outlook to the UWP and give that to everybody. That's the only kind of thing that makes sense, right? That they're going to replace mail with their Outlook because they use the Outlook brand on iOS, Android. They also obviously have Outlook um, on the desktop in the Office 365 suite. Um, they use Outlook.com, but... I don't know, maybe they're going to rebrand mail and they're going to have this nice, fancy, feature-complete Outlook mail app. I don't know. It, which, to be honest, seems, unless they're building upon the current mail app, it seems like it's a complete waste of time to have both of these apps built and then abandoned. But you know what? Microsoft has already set that precedence pretty well with Skype, who they've built, abandoned, built, abandoned, built. Yeah, they're on their third build. <laughs> I had to keep track of that in my head with their apps. So who knows? Who knows? But if you, anybody has a clue... And we'll talk about people contacting me this week because it's worked out really well. If anybody has a clue what's going on, that would be absolutely wonderful. <sighs> um, FUD of the week? Jesus Christ, guys. Okay, so this happened uh, over the weekend and Reddit, I think it was over the weekend, it was overnight. I woke up in the morning with like a million messages, people saying, oh my God, uh, Microsoft signature PCs are now blocking Linux. Microsoft is the devil. They've reverted from their old ways. They're no longer an open company and they hate Linux. And And... They're doing this because 2017 is the year of the Linux desktop. Okay, okay, pitchforks down, you know, just 
just simmer down. So this headline came out. It started from ZDNet, uh, and, and it got started. This guy started this whole debauchery from a support response uh, thread on Lenovo. So Lenovo ships certain configurations. Lenovo has certain configurations that run uh, SSDs in a RAID. And I don't have the full details of the exact RAID configuration because I stopped caring about life at that point once I realized that this is not an actual issue. And so Lenovo has this certain RAID configuration that's not currently supported by Linux. Like the, that RAID is not, con the, the configuration is not supported by Linux. Say that again. The configuration is not supported by Linux, which means Linux was failing to install because of the configuration, which means it's not supported. And so what the tech support thread guy geniusly wrote is that this was a Microsoft mandate for signature PCs. And that's where everything went off the rails. Like, when I saw this, Paul and I just started looking at each other like, this makes no sense. Like, like why why now? Why would they suddenly start locking things out? And mind you, the signature PC market of the overall OEM market is a extreme fraction. So this, like, it didn't make sense. So I actually emailed Microsoft, and it took them uh, a couple, almost 12 hours to actually get to the bottom of this, which immediately, so there's a couple things. When you email Microsoft from a comment, um, typically they're pretty good about getting back to you relatively quickly, like, you know, a couple hours, one, two hours, they got to figure it out, especially, you know, once they're online and all that stuff. So when things start taking like 10 hours or more, you're like, something's off here. Mostly because, uh, unofficially, I don't quite know this, but I assume that Microsoft in the back end just kind of looked at this and went, what the, like, <laughs> because it didn't make sense. And so what they came back to me is they specifically said that Windows Signature PCs do not block the installation of Linux. That is not what Microsoft does. Um, for those who don't know what a Signature PC is, a Signature PC is something you buy directly from Microsoft that does not have any bloatware installed. So like all that crapware that comes on a, a PC, when you buy it directly from Microsoft, they ship it to you without the bloatware. And so the what somebody assumed was that Microsoft was forcing these vendors to block Linux installations on these signature PCs. That's not the case. Uh, it's complete crap. It's just ignoring. But yeah. Oh my gosh. So that, like, people people still think Microsoft has this vendetta against Linux. And, it, and I don't want to come off as like a Microsoft like apologist by saying this, but I honestly don't think they do. Why don't I think they do? Well, shit. They're, uh, they're shipping just about all their major software available for Linux. They run a uh, Red Hat Linux suite in Azure. They have released a Skype Linux desktop client. They have, uh, what else? They have SQL Server is coming uh, to Linux support. They've open sourced half of their crap. Um, like, I don't think that Microsoft has a secret vendetta against Linux on the desktop. And personally, now is the worst time to care because the desktop is not a growing market for Microsoft. Uh, and it's not being cannibalized by Linux users. Um, I don't even think it's really being cannibalized by Mac users. It's just contracting as a whole because so many people have smartphones and they're upgrading their PC less and less people are buying PCs. It just, that's just the nature of the market. So the, the, the tinfoil hat theories out there about Microsoft still hating Linux, um, which may have been very valid in the 90s. I'm not arguing that. But in 2016, I think it's completely bunk at this point. So there you go. Um, t -t 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 -t. So I got a nice little scoop this week. And t -t 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 -t. it's called Skype Teams. We've seen this before. And actually, uh, I got this a tip from a reader. So thank you to you that uh, they were able to connect with the source and, you know, long daisy chain of information. And I was able to get the correct information about Skype Teams. So Skype Teams, for those not familiar, is a Microsoft's home-built competitor to Slack. Now, now, now put that on hold for a second. Uh, earlier this week, I think it was Ars Technica came up with this thing that Microsoft is building a new app. It's called Skype for Life. So Skype for Life is not a new application, at least I, I don't believe so. Skype for Life is the name that Microsoft is using for their new cloud infrastructure-based Skype. Um, I talked to Gurdeep, he's the, the corporate vice president of Skype back in July, and they talked about their new initiative, they're moving everything into the cloud, and it's reduced a lot of their problems. And it, it really has. Skype has, knock on wood, been pretty good for me lately. And I think this is part of that Skype for Life thing. It's in the cloud, it's in their Azure infrastructure and all that good stuff. And so I think there was some crossing the wires over at R saying this is like a new application or something. 
but I don't believe that is. So anyway, so built on the Skype for Life platform is Skype Teams. Skype Teams is a Slack competitor, and I posted some screenshots up on Petri, and I was told that right now they're actually entering a private beta with a lot of different testers around the globe. I mean, it's private, but from what I've understood from a couple different people, it's actually pretty widely private. Um, we're going to see a little bit more public beta for Skype for Teams in November. And I'm hearing that we're going to get a release, a public release will come in January. Now, granted, these timelines, just like Thera Premium, are subject to change. That's just what it is today. These are the target things. But the Skype Teams exist. I have screenshots of it. Uh, I even have a video of it. They're, they're all sorts of stuff. It's real. And from the people... Um, again, multiple people telling me this, that it's actually really well polished. Supposedly the company has been building this thing for over a year, like 16 to 18 months or something like that. So it's not just some sort of crap Skype app. Now I completely agree with everybody who commented and said, you know what? Skype doesn't really have a great track record with kind of this kind of stuff. hundred percent agree. Do not dispute that in any way, shape or form. But I can tell you from what I've seen of the Skype teams app, uh, it's pretty good. It looks really well polished, and this isn't something that Microsoft is just rushing out the door. I, I really think they took their time, and they're doing this right, and they're not caving into market pressures to get this out. They're doing it right. And hats off to them for finally taking their time to get this get this into a good position. So with that being said, it looks like it's going to be bundled with Office 365. That's not really a big surprise. What I don't know, and I may not have been clear enough of this in my post, is there might be a free SKU. I don't know. I honestly do not know. Right now, they're testing it with Teams because, granted, a an individual license to Skype for Teams, um, like through Office 365 Home, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Because that, that's one. You, you need a team. Like, one user in Skype Teams doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't really work all that well. So... That being said, they still might do it. I don't have all the information there, but it looks like it's going to be bundled with Office 365, uh, I think starting with E3, so the lowest level tier. And I think this is really going to hurt Slack. I do. So here's why. Microsoft is making this you know, quasi-free for what you're already paying. A lot of companies, now I, now I know there's going to be people saying, well, start up, blah, blah, blah. I get it. I, I'm, I'm going to go there. Trust me. But a lot of companies are already paying for Office 365. There's what, like over 80 million users or something like that. Don't quote that number. Uh, there's a lot of people already using Office 365 in the corporate world. All those people get Slack for free. They're not going to have to, they're not paying more for that. If they're using Slack, then they're paying an additional fee per user to use that application. Uh, management will look at this and say, hey, we've got a lot of users on Slack. We could use Skype Teams. We're already paying for it. Why are we paying for the same software twice? Let's port it. Now, what I don't know, and if Microsoft is really on the ball, they'll find a way to export Slack data into Skype Teams. That would be the killer feature. If we know they can do it to some extent, they do it with Evernote, right? They have a tool that allows you to port from Evernote to uh, OneNote. If they can create a tool that exports Slack data into Skype Teams, oh boy, that would be, that's like the holy grail that Microsoft needs to really, really get Slack or Slack Teams, Skype Teams off the ground and running. I'm excited about Skype Teams. I don't currently use Slack, but uh, I'm optimistic that I will get, you know, we're going to start using it uh, with Blue Whale Web. Blue Whale Web Media Group is the holding company for Petri, Throughout, and IT Unity, by the way. So I'm optimistic we can start using it there. And Kumbaya, we'll see what happens with Skype Teams. It, it's looking neat, guys. I think, I think Microsoft finally kind of got their head out of their ass and uh, built some quality software here. So we'll see... We'll see what's going on. Uh, do, 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 do. So what else this week? Um, not to divert. I know this is usually Microsoft stuff, but people kept asking me when my review about... So I got an iPhone 7. I, I mentioned this last Friday. It came about an hour after the show. And so I'll just run through kind of the quick things, whatever. I will have a full review. I, I don't believe in just getting a review up as fast as possible for the hell of getting a re review up. Uh, I'm traveling next week, obviously. And I want to take this thing on the road, right? I, I, I really honestly want to use it. So, so here's, here's kind of my gut reaction to the iPhone seven. Um, I'm a little underwhelmed and I don't know. So I had an iPhone six and I'm jumping to a seven. That's a, a two year. So a six S came out and now seven. So that's a two generation jump, right? Yes. And Eric, this is the matte black. I did not go jet black. I don't ever put cases on my phones. 
Um, and considering Apple was saying, hey, the Jet Black is already prone to scratches. And if you've seen the pictures on Twitter, oh my God, it not only scratches, I mean, it gets nasty really, really quick. So here's the thing with this phone. I often have considered the iPhone the Toyota Camry of cell phones, right? And why do I say that? It's a good phone. It'll get you from point A to point B. But it's not like, it's not like crazy, right? Like if you want a better screen, there's an Android, you can find an Android phone with a better screen. You can find an Android phone likely with a better camera. You can find an Android phone with a longer battery life. That's the beauty of Android. If you have a specific need, you want super long battery life, you can go find a phone that will beat the iPhone. The iPhone, what it does, it just does a lot of everything, does everything good. Um, even the camera, to be honest. So I, I had high hopes for this camera and it's, it's fine. It is fine to keep in your pocket and walk around, but I'm still not, I, I'm not like sold on this thing. Like it's good, but it's not exceptional. Like Apple like puts up these, like these photos and they're like, oh my God, they're so pretty. I honestly bet I could put, take an iPhone six photo and an iPhone seven photo, put them right next to each other. And people would have a very, very hard time telling the difference between the two. Maybe, maybe I should do that. Um, one thing I will tell you that I was worried about the home button is no longer a button. It's just a force touch thing. And I will tell you it, it works exceptionally well. If Apple did one thing, well, it's this, like you, you actually do think it's a button. And I was like, there's no way I'll get fooled, but yeah, yeah, it's really good. Cause when you turn the phone off, you realize it's just a hard area. So they, the home button, not an issue to me, the headphone jack doesn't bother me so much. And here's why I only use one pair of headphones and they're in my travel bag. So I don't, I don't use headphones. And so I just put that adapter on my travel in my travel bag connected to the headphones. It's not a big deal for me, but I totally get why people would like, would be really annoyed about it. Other than that, it's a good phone. Don't get me wrong. It's a good phone. Battery life is fine. It's just not, it, it's not some magical unicorn phone. So it, that's, that's kind of like, you know, the 30 seconds I could, I could talk a lot longer about it, but that's the iPhone seven. It's a good phone. It'll serve you very well and take good photos and it'll run well. It does run hot, by the way, Jesus, this thing gets warm. Um, and it'll be fine. It, it's just not, it's not some magical thing. Um, it's, it's an iPhone six really. Let's just be that in black. So that's, that's the iPhone seven. Speaking of hardware, speaking of hardware guys. So the reason why I called this show hardware is hard is some people will actually message me and be like, are you just going to dog on surface hardware? Like, no, 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 no. I'm going to start off by dogging on surface hardware. <laughs> uh, no, the Pro 3, guys, seriously, there's another battery-related issue, this time for with the LG batteries. And Microsoft very specifically said it is not the same thing. It is not caused by the firmware of the Simplo issue that they fixed last month. They're looking into it, but the LG battery on the Surface Pro 3 is now facing the same battery battery problems. And it, it drives me nuts. And so this just kind of... It, and you'll see where I'm going with this. Microsoft has had a lot of problems with hardware, right? We all know the issues with the Surface Book and Skylake. That was a disaster. We've now had problems with the Surface Pro 3 battery life. Uh, the Surface RT was just a bad product in general. It wasn't necessarily hardware-related. It was terrible marketing and all that good stuff. And so Microsoft has had issues, the band breaking like crazy. Uh, yeah. So at Microsoft has had quite a bit of problems with hardware. Making hardware uh, like this is very tough. Now, don't get me wrong. Apple has had the same problems. Now, the reason why we don't hear about Apple hardware problems on the laptop side is they're all very old. Uh, there are some Apple like PCs that haven't been updated in over a thousand days and all of their hardware is, is aged, right? Some of them are using like two and a half, three year old chips. So if they were still having problems today, that would be incredible. But Apple's laptops and all that crap are old. Now, granted, Apple has had hardware problems, though. Uh, when the 27-inch iMacs came out, they had yellow screen issues. Uh, there was a trackpad issue with a very small run of MacBook Pros at one point. We can't forget about AntennaGate on the iPhones. So it's uh, the hardware problem is not exclusively you know, Microsoft's thing. Apple has screwed it up as well. Everybody has screwed up hardware. Hardware is hard. And that's the end of the day is it, it worked on their, you know, what 50 device sample run. But when you go from 50 to 500,000 or a million machines, 
it problems, you know, one little problem is exacerbated across the entire line. Anyways, hardware is hard and Microsoft is hopefully gonna get a Surface Pro 3 fix here very soon. And we'll see what kind of hardware they have later this year. Apple is actually rumored to relaunch, I'm assuming, um, all of their hardware here in October. That was Mark Gurman rumor, a uh, very reliable source saying he, that Apple is going to refresh some of their hardware products ahead of the holidays. Um, we'll see if they do think they better because Jesus, they're old. Um, yeah. So there's that other things that are going on in the Microsoft world this week. So I wasn't going to talk about this because I only heard it from one person. And then at the 11th hour before this podcast, uh, I got another tip um, from somebody who's close to the company, I believe, said that the, the Microsoft band team has been disbanded. And so I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to actually talk about this, but I've now heard it from two people that things have happened to the band team that it just like no longer exists. So I don't quite know. I, I, I re- previously said that I didn't believe a band three was coming. Mary Jo Foley didn't think she thought she heard that a band was never coming again. And so now I'm kind of leaning more towards her her thing and saying, Hey, I think the entire band team is done. So I, I would not be, if you're like sitting on the fence waiting for a new band. Now I could completely have an egg on my face. If they announced one later this year, I realistically do not think that's going to happen, but, um, I would just go ahead and buy a Fitbit and Apple watch. Uh, don't buy a jawbone. Apparently jawbone, by the way, if you had not heard, this is like out of money has no inventory, but whatever. Um, yeah, I would look elsewhere for that stuff or to be honest, a lot of phones just have pedometer capabilities built in. You may not need one. It's totally up to you, but that is Kumbaya, whatever. Uh, that's the band stuff. So windows 10, uh, on the windows 10 side again, actually, sorry, not the windows 10 side, the windows seven and windows eight dot one side. Our national nightmare is finally come to an end. Microsoft has as an option, I believe it's optional. So it's not completely over released an optional update for Windows 7 and 8.1 that removes the pop-up ad for Windows 10. Remember the Get Windows 10 app that says, hey, click me and install Windows 10, or we'll just download it anyways and hope that you accidentally click the wrong button and install Windows 10. So uh, that is now gone. So Microsoft released an update, bada boom, it's gone. If you're still holding out hopes that Microsoft at get some point in the future would offer Windows 10 for free, it looks like that's not happening. Um, I never heard that it would, but yeah, there you go. Other things that are happening in the world of Microsoft week, uh, they announced that by 2018, they hope to be on 50% renewable energy, which is, you know, good job, Microsoft, uh, keeping the sustainable planet and whatever. Uh, that's, I shouldn't say whatever. That's, that's pretty commendable. If you're trying to, you know, get off of dino fuel and onto renewable energy, it's, it's hard not to support that effort. And finally, health fault. Oh God. So I joked with Paul and some people are going to email me over this joke. Uh, I said for Halloween this year, I was going to be a sinking ship titled the USS windows phone. And Paul said, you should just stand in the shower and drink while wearing that costume. Uh, (laughs) But health vault, a Microsoft owned application, Microsoft owned application, no longer supports windows phone health vault. They announced that they are no longer going to support windows phone. So that's, they're recommending you use the web version. And it's like, that's just another nail in the already nailed home coffin when Microsoft stops supporting it. Now granted, they could come out with another app that's going to replace some of this functionality. But at this time, um, that, well, they don't really care about bad press in their Windows Phone segments anymore. They stopped caring about that stuff a long time ago, unfortunately. So I don't know. We'll leave it on kind of like the rumors and crazy stuff. Everyone keeps asking if Microsoft is doing a surface watch instead of a band ever since that information's come out. I don't quite know. I have no idea. Wearables. Um, I know they're still exploring that space, but what they're going to do there is unknown. Maybe we'll learn a little bit more later this year, but anyways, uh, Insider tip of the week this week, guys. If you have Office 365 and you're in a corporate environment, be on the lookout. You might be able to get access to Skype Teams pretty soon. Uh, November, I know, is like the wider release, but every time that they start doing these things, uh, more and more people keep telling me, it says, hey, I have access to Skype for Teams too. And so I know they have to provision, I believe, from the back end, but you can just start poking around. If you've got a corporate subscription to Office 365, totally be on the lookout for that stuff. So... 
that is the end of this show this week, guys. Be on the lookout for everything that's coming next week. It's going to come hot and heavy, and we're going to have to track bugs, and we're going to have to do all that stuff. My life is going to be crazy being traveling and trying to do launch products because it's always good to launch products while you're on the road. But good stuff is coming. I'm really excited to see what you guys think. I know there'll be some good feedback, some negative feedback, but we're all ready for all of it. And it's going to be an iterative process and we got to get to version one, which is coming soon. So thanks for watching guys. Appreciate it and have a great weekend.